Yes. The answer is yes. Here now, today, in Disco Elysium Part 10, we are going to put another point into physical instruments so that perhaps we can make us ourselves heard through the furnace. I think it's a good thing that I failed, because that basically... well, not really. I was gonna say that it basically forces me to put another point into a thing I didn't intend to put a point into, but the g I'm not really forced to do it, but I want to do it. So I'm gonna say it's basically for uh, it, it's basically forces me to do it. I'm gonna do it. Cause that's I probably wouldn't have done that on my own, but now I can probably take down people without well arrest people if it ever comes to that. Maybe now we can actually. <laughs> Thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Yeah, maybe now we are strong enough to actually yell. 83% freaking come on. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then. Thank you. Hello. You hear a woman's voice answer. This is the police. Who's there? Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There is a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. Thank you. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Thank you, officer. Detective, do you want to be called officer or do you want to be called detective, Mr. Kim? Mr. Kitsuragi? Anyway, no more... Can we go up? Thank you. No more beating our fists, knuckles bloody against the security curtain. We can finally find out who the entity is. Definitely a woman. But what is she doing here? Why did she... Uh, lock herself in here? Oh, this is a nice little studio. This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. Oh, can I have some? The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Ooh, I like this. Tell me your story. Hello, I'm Nia. Nia, a bird-like woman, sits on a throne of fools with emerald light shining through her hair. A throne of fools. Bird-like woman. Is it because of the scarf? The headscarf? Don't see how that would make you bird-like maybe maybe like a parrot perhaps and a throne of fools uh, i don't get that one did you try knocking on my window i must have missed you i've been listening to my milius your she taps on her headphones no we didn't try the window could we have tried the window i didn't see any windows so what kind of die are you looking for uh, what do you have D20s, D6s, D12s, I'll even take a D4. I have D8s enough. I have enough D8s. I have enough D6s too, come to think of it. Maybe a D100? A few D10s? She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on, what do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. A milieu. Basically... Okay. I think I can see where our word milieu came from, which is basically... Environment? Huh? Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. <laughs> but some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed. I must have missed you knocking. Isn't that basically the first thing you always learn whenever you try and learn a new language? 
the colourful swear words. Had a few friends uh, uh, on a mud I played back in the back in the old days. Let's just say that back in the old days. A few from the Americas. Uh, we talked, and of course, the first thing they wanted to know was how to curse in Swedish, and I was only too happy to oblige them. Uh, you must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. How would I? It's kind of, it's kind of high up. I could have thrown a stone, I guess. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Wait, why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? No. As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Okay. Now physical instrument is getting... Getting some... Um, getting some uh, talking time. Role-playing games? <clears throat> you know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Hmm. Maybe uh, I'm not really sure why I'm here. Honestly, yes, we are. We 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 are, we are sure why we're here. Also, the entity. Let's see what she says. I'm not really sure why I'm here. How strange. Well, if you're interested, my rate is ten real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Ooh, that is tempting, but I need my 20 real for tomorrow. But I can probably get 10 real by tomorrow, right? I can probably get 10 real. Do I want a set of dice? Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room growing out of the shells like stalagmites. Hmm, maybe. It does look cozy, for sure. I see a little, little fan down there. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. I see, but do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. Oh. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. No, yeah, most of them. Most of the people I met are. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. Oh, that's for sure. I've seen some weird dice. Um, hey, where are we anyway? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they have been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. So you just moved in and have been squatting ever since. Well, that's beneath our pay grade, so we don't really care. Create here. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into shadows above. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I've heard that this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Yeah, just like the news, we only think that basically Everything everywhere is going to crap because good news don't sell. Only bad news does. I'm sure th th things are kind of going to crap here and there, but... 
I think there's more good in the world than we think. We just don't hear about it because... Rage bait. Keep people divided. Keep people angry. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She is convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore probably isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers, though I did see one standing outside reading, but they didn't buy a book. And she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. All oh, right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Well, no, the whirling isn't doing very well either. It's a uh, waitress just took off and customers have trouble paying bills. And then there is me. <sighs> she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there, scattered from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea. Yet somehow, I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Hmm... No, not really. Like we said, some role players have the big bugsy to spend on their hobby. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. It's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. <laughs> what, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? What you're describing isn't a curse. It's capitalism. Yeah. Kind of is. I'm starting to see that there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market uh, fluctua fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. Sorry. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Yes, a few things. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm shining my flashlight in your face, but I'm unable to put it down right now. That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful. As far as we can see. As far as we can see, but Shivers is here with a legendary check. 70%. I don't think we can make it. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Okay, but did you see anything? The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. I mean, it does look kind of... Uncleaned, maybe very dirty. So maybe she didn't see much. Maybe maybe she heard something, unless she was listening to her milieu. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Well... There's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. Yeah, like kids shouting slurs and throwing stones and being generally obnoxious and they... We hate them, my precious. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. So you have been picking up on a quite a lot, then. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. Yes, thank you, drama. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. She looks up at the window, and paler light comes in. And you never took your eyes off the, win of, 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 of the work to look out of the window? I might have, but in this case... All I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. How very poetic! It's light here, but dark in the yard at night. Yes, thank you, Visual Calculus. I, I get that. Yes, 
That that's usually how things work. When it's dark, it's dark. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Good work ethic. Ethics. Thank you. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Hmm. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Uh, do you know what happened to other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? She adjusts the yellow scarf that covers her hair. Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. Uh, what happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk use away from drugs and crime. Interesting. And who was Artemitep? A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym. As his way of giving back. <laughs> Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? He's the little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth. Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window, but it's only quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're very right. I think Kuno is a lost cause. Let's just, let's, let's knock him out. Uh, give him some cement boots and accidentally drop him in the river. How did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Yeah, so that's why it's kind of broken. You should have known it. Shut up, electrochemistry. <laughs> you fall for anything as long as there's alcohol or drugs involved. Just get out of here. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. No. No. No, definitely, definitely not in an active gym, because people would be using the punching bag and they would probably feel that there was something else besides sand in there, yeah? Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Hmm. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. What the hell is a genderless haircut? I don't know. I mean, who... who... Who really cares what you do with your hair? It's hair. As long as you don't, don't get too old, it grows back out. Who cares? You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. Shut up, physical instrument. I'll do whatever the hell I want with my hair. I have a, I'm currently kind of sporting a mullet. Kind of. Even though that, uh, that looks nothing like my picture down there, but sure. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. Yeah, you never know if it's going to look good or bad. Just try it. Like I said, hair grows back. It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. Uh, okay. Yeah, what's wrong with experimenting? The customers should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. So, what's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Hmm. Turns out, 
The business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? You? Hmm, what's the snuff media? Something with murder, I'm assuming. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very cool about the debris, but uh, I'm afraid to ask, but what's a snuff milieu? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Yeah, I bet. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. What does she mean to get off on it? You don't want to know. You do not want to know. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Hmm, okay, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Mr. Kitsuragi. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. She lets the thought go. Did um, someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounds lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. I'm starting to see why every business around here failed. <laughs> But what drugs exactly? Uh, let it pass. We're not going to give in to electrochemistry. We're going to let electrochemistry starve. Anything else? I found some creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of... Mm-hmm. The Atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. I mean, I guess that could be a viable business. Take the beetles, capture the beetles, make food out of them, use the chitin and wings for clothes. Win-win, use the entire creature. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I mean, I, uh, I don't really care about insects that much. They got what they deserve, making... Mm. Uh, making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea, but... As long as you... Like I said, as long as you use the rest of the beetle, go for it. I guess we're going with... Uh, but insects don't have any brains or feelings. Actually, insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. I think we were trying to say that insects probably aren't sentient. They're more instinctual. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Yeah, but, you know, flies. You've killed a few flies. I've killed a few flies. Freaking banana flies. Anything else? Uh, what's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Oh, one of those kind of people. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. That that is kind of funny in a way. And yes, we that's probably illegal, Mr. Harry Dubois. But I guess it's no no one cared to Yeah, interesting what do these transmissions say? I guess no one cared about trying to arrest the guy. The usual, I imagine. 
that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Oh, Kim is not, does not approve. Men like that are a curse. The lieutenant is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Hmm. They were just the props. Why return them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. I like the way you think interfacing. I I like you. You're 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 a you're a fun one. Now I found this strange machine. Fortress accident. The radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. Oh. Very passionate gamers. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. <laughs> what do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as, as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Ah, uh, they got a little bit f too full of themselves, did they? She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. No. I mean, I don't... It's probably not rigged to keep out new businesses, per se. Maybe in places where big companies almost have a monopoly, but... You just need something that people really, really want. And you sh probably shouldn't open a normal store. You know, go digital, online. Most likely. I have no idea. I know nothing about businesses. Don't listen to me. Ignore me. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. Well, you gotta show up to work on time. You gotta be punctual. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have work ethics. And it feels like everything here is boiling down to everyone's work ethics ethic sucked. And uh, that's why everything went to crap. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult. Especially if you've been drinking. Uh, you don't even have to be drinking. Showing up to work at all is difficult if you don't love your, love your job. It freaking sucks. Well, you know, sh sh showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. N no, no, it really isn't. You just gotta, just gotta do it. Just do it. Actually, just do it. You can just show up, even if you hate it. You can. It's not difficult to show up on time unless you're. Extremely depressed or burned out, burnt out. Then sure, but otherwise, no. I mean, that is too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one on a 20 sided die. Of course it is. Anything else? Uh, there was a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian, ready to tell a story. 
Oh, regale me with your tail, novelty dice maker. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Ooh, tell me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? All right, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. Ah. Oh. Well, that's not inter interesting. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back, disapproving. Well, if you're gonna be blatant with hiring a pretty face just because it's a pretty face and you're gonna use that to lure customers in, at least make sure they don't have their resting bitch face on. They shouldn't look like this. And yes, this is my neutral expression. Very much a resting bitch face. Flitter does the same thing. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> Although, she... She's a bit standoffish, sure, but she... She doesn't have a mean look. She's... I wouldn't say she's not friendly, she's just... She, she just doesn't want to chit chat. I mean, what did they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work and not alone. There were also acne ridden girlfriends and gorilla like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. Oh, and that probably scared customers away even more, huh? And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. I'm guessing it didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. That doesn't bode well for our corpse that's currently in the in the fridge. Also, why the hell would you have ice cream in a refrigerator? Wouldn't you want a freezer for ice cream? Of course it came out partially melted. It's a freaking fridge. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. I mean, yeah, it's the market doing its job. Hmm, maybe. Because the taxidermist who made the bear definitely wasn't doing his job, I mean. Yeah, was that the guy who did the, did did all the drugs? How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Megatherian. At least it at least it has a cool name. Sounds cool. Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. Okay, and what's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. Uh huh. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. <laughs> so, Harry's spirit animal is what you're saying. A wise and noble beast guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. Of course, you were gonna chime in electrochemistry. I don't have a comment on drugs. Understandable. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Yeah. There's a lot of things I shouldn't do as a police officer that I have done. Uh, incidentally, have you seen a police badge or a gun around here somewhere? I still haven't found my badge. 
Anyway, now you know the story mm. of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low-hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. Thank you, Shivers. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the buildings in the calm, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. Mm, I don't think so. I, I only tried the Revachol Eyes, the new one, which didn't work. And nothing else, I think? I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. Oh, so I guess we did try yours. It's the empty one. Also, still in the middle of connecting the wires and you've been here for... How many years? The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her then. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. Mm hmm I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. Uh, actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Let me say, I would like to order a die from you. Maybe. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Um... Do you have any cursed dice? What do you mean by cursed? As cursed as my life. All right. How about I surprise you? Come back in eight hours with seven real, and I'll give you your cursed die. You want to meet me at ten, half past ten tonight? Um, I can scrounge up seven real till tomorrow. Yeah, sure. It's a deal. Great. See you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? Uh, I have to try, you know? Why hasn't her business failed? A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. So I can fail a physical instrument with 82%, but I succeed a legendary with 17% chance success. Such is the game of RNG. This is just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? She asks as the wind continues to seep in through the cracks in the old chimney. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. You're in the chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks around the makeshift nest that she has carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? It has a different address in the heart of the city. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? No one's ever really safe from the failure. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. A lucky charm, a Semenese ward. It's a mourning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center. 
filled with the little I inherited from my parents. Mm -hmm. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. Okay, and why are you telling me this? It wasn't just a jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? I mean, don't call it a dump. You've made it nice and cozy here. Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. The entire world is cursed, huh? You know what? Yeah, I, I think I can subscribe to that theory. Yes. The entire world is cursed. Let's go with that. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. Depends on how hard you chuck them. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. She picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. That's a rather philosophical stance. Every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. Hmm. I quite like that. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. She gives me a tired smile. Okay. Then we gained a thought. <laughs> The precarious world. Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of defeat on all fronts. Victory in business ventures and creative undertakings. Victory in love and over other people. Political victory. Ideological victory. Hell, even sexual victory. Definitely a lot of object-based victories too. Having things and not losing them. One problem though. Not a lot of victors in sight. Everyone's mostly losing. Why is that? And how do you not lose? Temporary research bonus. All red checks fail. Temporary research bonus. I do wonder what you would get for actually completing this. Okay. I'm actually gonna unlock another slot so I can put in the thought. I don't... I could just forget about this one. But let's keep it for now. Because whether I spend up a point to forget the thought or just... Spend another point to unlock for a new thought. I'm gonna I'm gonna save it first because I haven't messed with this. So if I, it doesn't matter where the thoughts go, right? So if I just unlock this one, and then we think about the precarious world. Gotta remember that. All red checks fail. I, I haven't seen very many red checks. I do have to go talk to the... the... Um, lorry driver who's... having a... Has a who has a shop. Hopefully he doesn't have a red check. You know what? No risk, no reward. Okay. I guess we can go back to Plaisance and tell her that... The entity has been... 
um, exercised, excised. Mm. We still need to find the password for this. I still think that's in the ice cream maker downstairs. For which I needed a super pry bar. Because my current pry bar is no good. No bueno. I have unplugged it though. So maybe a few hours will soften the ice enough that I can use my current crowbar. Come on, Kim, we're running again. Oh, what's this? Shot put ball. Uh-huh. I could give that to the old guys who play who play petank. Are we gonna lift? A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. 60 kilos. I'm not afraid to admit that I would probably not be able to lift that. For one, I'm weak. For for the second, my knees are injured and I have I have a bad back, so <laughs> I would probably something would go <sniffs> if I tried. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the colors? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Forty-two percent. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I lose a life. Screw it. Lift the barbell. Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. Are you actually holding the barbell with your index fingers? Kinda looks like you are. <laughs> Say nothing, but just revel in the feeling. Oh, free morale heal. Nice. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Hmm. Good technique. The lieutenant nods with approval. Thank you, Kim. I was kind of hoping that I would spot a pry bar now that I know that I'm looking for one. Oh well. Got the shot put ball at least. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculine. Is this, is this because we talked about the genderless haircuts? Is that why you're bothered Harry? Don't let things like that bother you. Be secure in yourself. Alright, so play songs. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus. The dark sarcophagus? Yes, yes. How was it? Tell her how ghastly it was. You know it's what she wants to hear. <laughs> 
<sighs> Should I? I'm so tempted. It was a charnel house of failed business enterprises, leeching life energy from this very bookstore. I knew it. Oh, such horrors that have been <laughs> thrust upon us. A <laughs> tremor runs through her, and she shakes her head. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? I talked to the entity you told me about her name is Niha and she's a novelty dice maker a novelty dice maker well spit it out why does she need the dice for some kind of sorcery oh sometimes they no. use the ankle bones of sheep oh you're one of those people you're one of those people okay of course you are of course you are <sighs> no, ma'am, I have felt her aura. She is not the one to blame for this curse. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. The narrative she's built herself, it does need tearing down. She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. Um. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie to her. Hmm. We could say that there is no curse because there are too many inconsistencies. Or we can keep the door open. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet. There are still leads to be followed, like that strange radio computer thing. You're telling me that you went in there and didn't find out anything about the curse? She looks disappointed. Of course. I should have known better than to put my hopes on a man like you. You're no Simonese ghost whisperer. You're an alcoholic. Oh, screw you, lady. The investigation's over. I don't want you going in there anymore. You're only angering the psychic weather in here. Now, if you're not going to buy anything... She turns to face the door, waiting for potential customers that are never going to come. Wow. Total psychic collapse between you two right now. There was never any other way this could have gone. She's just too far gone into her own mind. Yeah, she's... She is gone. I am sorry we had to disappoint you, ma'am. Can we go now? Uh, yes, we can. And we, we have actually unlocked the back door into this place so she can just go screw herself. Now, where would one find a super crowbar? By the way, uh, I have a replacement ball for you. You're still waiting for a replacement for the ball you sent sinking. Oh, no. Found you guys a new bull. Pulled out the bowl. What is this? How are you mocking us? This isn't for Pitonk. He stares at the shot bull put ball in silence and... Now, now, no need to get angry again, Rene. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. Exactly, and I really did try. Trying is worth as much as is accomplished. In this case, almost nothing. So I guess do or do not. There is no try. Actually, works. Fine. You try to write a wrong. It's still a gun better than actual nothing. Yes. Rene, I found your guard booth. Yes. The Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. Just for the cha-ching cha-ching? I get it. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... 
Money is tight. He adds with a slight sigh. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Hold on, why are you on a leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. Yeah, that sounds like my father. If it wasn't a broken bone or he was near death, he refused to go to the doctor. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <laughs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. He says while clutching his chest. Okay, so who was working your shift that night? No one. The boss has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. Not even during the days? No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Huh? Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. M mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. Mm. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. I mean, that makes him a little bit of a good guy in my eyes. Um, I mean, Evrar gets it. Big guys looking after the small and everyone working together. I love it. Ray is but one man. We need a program. Get all the elderly back in the job market. Keep folks motivated if they want to. Rene should rent out his services, invest the profit, get a few more guys, expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my side thing too. Could you, could you, could you, could you? <laughs> uh, I don't believe in number two. Such dependency only weakens a man further. Do or die, there is no middle ground. Sometimes we all need a little, little help. And um, those who say differently are uh, liars. We all need a little help now and then. How would you guys feel about uh, starting up a program? Keep folks motivated, get them back in through the workforce. Depends on what you mean by elderly, though. There, There is a cutoff point, definitely, where the elderly should be able to just rest and relax and actually be able to make a living. And be supported by, by society for their services. Now, we're not talking about making a living, like in being able to go on... Um, have, afford to go on luxury cruises and living in splendor and grandeur you know just just make a living have a little bit over so you can buy some buy something maybe a book here maybe go to a movie just just a little bit you know so we'll go with the first one Evrar. can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now there's a grimace of pain on the old soldier's face looks like he wants to argue but can't find the words. I saw a picture in there. You were in, you were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. All right, all right. I'm not gonna pry. 
You keep your private affairs private. I completely understand. I will not delve deeper into it. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it. Thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Hmm, I'm getting uh, more points here now. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about this rifle here? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Bridge loading. Revachol made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. I had a feeling you would like it. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? You know, in the basement over there by the bookshop. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. Understandable. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Maybe I should just go sell it then? Okay, tr try this composure. I have 28% chance. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. Okay. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. I see. Don't you mean Fissel the Fun? Fissel the Fun? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown. Ours to ridicule. <laughs> to mourn. You can't make fun of our of our leader. Only we are allowed to make fun of our leader. Like all the weird memes about the Swedish king. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Alright, need some more composure. Thank you for your time. We're actually gonna unequip my flashlights. Well, Kim's flashlights. Alright. Now we should go talk to the guy who had a shop. He was up here somewhere. No. Wait, he was round and down here, I think. Down here somewhere. Ooh, actually, what's this? An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air, with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who be these? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip the Fourth, the insane. The insaner. Come on, encyclopedia. Do your thing. What did this king do? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury. Oh. Starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers. The suzerain of Revachol. That's kind of impressive, blowing through the entire national treasury. I'm just assuming it's a lot. It was a lot. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. Mm hmm. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Mm-hmm. Krugerrands. The only other place I've heard of the... I've heard the word Krugerrand is 
Lethal weapon... Two? I think it was in two. It's two or three. Definitely two. Yes, because it's in three he meets... It's in three that Riggs meets Lorna. And two has the South African people. <laughs> the whole scene where... <laughs> They're playing through the skit where Roger wants to move to South Africa and they try to <laughs> dissuade him. <laughs> For context, if you haven't seen the movie. For one, it was basically set at the time where South Africa still had the apartheid regime. And Roger Murtaugh in the movies be a black man. So, yeah. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed, like a normal person. I wouldn't like to sleep on gold. That sounds extremely uncomfortable. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe, wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Nose candy? Not just any nose candy, though. We're talking Royal Philippian Blow. Allegedly twice as potent as the stuff you find nowadays. And purple. Philippian cocaine was purple. Purple. Okay, what is nose candy? Cocaine. Oh. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggy. That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later. Mm. Right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. So they could have just used that as a pretense to actually do what they did. To justify their actions. But yeah, this is quite a lot to process. His Majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. Uh, uh-huh. Okay, where is he buried now? Probably nowhere because they said he was dumped in the Insulindian Bay. Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the Royal Mausoleum. Ooh, sorry. <clears throat> A group of marble pleurons still surround the king's vandalized tomb. A deathly cold wind sweeps up candy wrappers and old newspapers. I'm kind of wondering how this statue-esque thing stays there. Sure, there, there are a few, a few lines and such, but... This looks... Looks like it wouldn't really support this weight. Does look cool though, but... Looks like it... Like it would fall apart at any moment. Anyway, what happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the Coalition's airships during the turn-of-the-century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. The communards again. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. Mm -hmm. So who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city. Mm-hmm. So... Dung holes, basically. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rear butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of... shit. I really don't get art. Neither do people in Martinez. The statue has proved to be 
controversial in a neighborhood mostly populated by the left-leaning working class. Mm. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life either. Okay. Got a little bit of history there. That's nice. Ooh, we have a lot of things to look at here. A bold slogan, Humanox, covers the truck. Can we look uh, in the back of this? Ooh, we can steal some money. I'm just stealing money from everywhere. White tank top, plus one physical instrument. I got an item. Um, I guess I got the gun back after I showed it to him. You know, no. We're gonna we're gonna keep the white satin shirt. I prefer that one. Hmm. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. And I got a skill point for that? Oh, uh, I, did I get experience for that? I am two skill points again. And I kind of thought he was down here. Didn't he sit in the streets somewhere? Or was he even further south then? Yes, down is south for me. Down is south, okay? He was definitely sitting in the middle of the road. Ah, uh, there he is! God damn it. What this? A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. West STG, West St. Gislaine. Everything is good here. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. Haven't I already talked to you? The name Sile is embroidered over his breast pocket. I thought I did. Maybe that was again during the whole try to punch Kuno in the face and die from morale thing. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! Yeah, because I remember he gives me a thumbs up. I remember that. What's so cool? Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer? No? Huh? From out on the bay. A cool wind gathers. It sweeps into the city, tugging at the textiles hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. Man, I love shivers. It is so good at building up the moment, the atmosphere. Shivers is basically a game master, a good game master. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! He makes both hands into finger pistols and fire a few finger bullets into the air. Whether I'm cool is unimportant. I have police questions for you. You're right, officer. One hundred percent. No playing around then. Strictly business. Maybe I can interest you in some premium menswear instead. Persuade him to give you some money? 42% challenging. No, let's not do that. I have money for now. Where are you from, Sealing? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. This man probably comes from Seaguy, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samara Isola. You're from the Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era 
when the Sea Guy Archipelago was colonized by Revachon. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. I said what I said, don't fret, let him answer. That's right, officer. But it's a bad scene for business there. Too many regulations. Extremely bad for an independent local entrepreneur. I mean, if, you, if you've said something, you've said something. No need to try and walk it back. Just, uh, sorry, I guess, you could say. Hey, why not support this local entrepreneur? You can start by buying a pair of sexy pants or cool sunglasses. Maybe some macaroni? So, Shilang, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. But he was unsure how to respond for a moment. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah. Tasty, tasty drugs. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. Investigating the local drug trade like some cool narc? But I am not a lorry driver. I am just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. It's raining. Nice. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorryman. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. Yeah, but you're still a lorry driver, aren't you? That, has, that doesn't really have anything to do with racism. That's just stating a fact that you're a lorry driver. So you admit you're a lorry driver? Exactly. No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. Strike one lying to me. Hmm. So you forgot to tell me? Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? He is digging his hole. He is digging his hole. And we're lending him shovels. Crowd, you know. The drug crowd? No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. It wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. Shush, please. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please, don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. No we're buddies, Sealing. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Okay. A lady lorry driver is behind the drug trade. Interesting. We haven't seen a lady lorry drive. If we did see someone standing up to the northeast from where we are right now, we didn't go talk to them. It could be her. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Oh right, I forgot there was a was a was an eighth Hardy Boy, and it was a she. Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Oh, things are starting to come together. Pieces by pieces. So could be pushal. Pieces are falling into place a little bit. She. Where is she? 
I haven't yet met a woman on the, on the roundabout. There's one by the statue of that king. I haven't gone near her. And I won't either. Mm -hmm. The third driver. We haven't talked to her yet. Where exactly is she? Near the horseback monument? Oh, it's really coming down now. Nice. In her lorry there. But I don't know if it's her. Are we cool now? I think we're cool now. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. <laughs> we have such good descriptions of people. Oh! The tattoo guy? The racist guy? Huh? All of them! Even the ones who've left! I don't hang out with them! I don't remember who has tattoos! Alright, alright, it's... Be we're cool now, we're cool now. Alright! I scored! Let's cap this off with a purchase! You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective! Both of you! You deserve it! Oh, look around, thanks. So... Female lorry driver. Up by the horseback statue. Well, we did see a person there. So... Also, do you think... Oh, okay. Didn't mean to run. I just saw a trash can. I'm still looking for a super cry bar. A super cry bar? <laughs> super pry bar. Oh, we can get some tear. That's cool, that's cool. That's like 20 cents. Hot air rises up from the sewer. Sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. That's sad. I'm guessing these all belong to him. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under my nose. Leave for now. I have sunglasses already. I found them somewhere. But yeah. Lady lorry driver who potentially knows something about the drug, drug trade and might be connected to the Hardy Boys? We'll see. We'll talk to her next time. For now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for making it this far. <laughs> Remember that you are very much appreciated. So please take care of yourself. And stay kind. Be kind. See you next time.